Hi and welcome to the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. A normal vaginal delivery requires minimal aid for its conduction. Whereas on the other hand we have operative vaginal delivery that requires quite a skill. The operative vaginal delivery basically means that we are using either a pair of obstetric forceps or a ventus cup to deliver the baby. And there are special circumstances or you can say there are special indications related to the use of an operative vaginal delivery. There can be maternal or fetal indications. Firstly talking about the maternal indications. First we have is prolonged second stage of labor. See the second stage of labor is from the full dilatation of the cervix to the delivery of the baby. And in case of a primary gravida, we can give a patient 3 hours and in case of a multi gravida, we can give the patient 2 hours. And in case we are using some regional anesthesia, we give more extra hours. So in case of a primary gravida patient, if it is prolonged more than 3 hours or more than 4 hours in case of a regional anesthesia and in a multi gravida patient prolonged for more than 2 hours or 3 hours in case of a regional anesthesia, we consider the patient is having a prolonged second stage of labor. The next indication is some maternal medical indication is telling us that we should go for an operative vaginal delivery. That is we want to cut short the second stage of labor. And where we want to cut short? For example, if the patient is having some cardiac dysfunction and there is an increased cardiac load in the second stage of labor. So we want to cut short that second stage of labor. Or the patient can have some neurological abnormality of the spinal cord. The patient cannot bear down effectively. So we go for a operative vaginal delivery. The next indication is maternal exhaustion. The mother is so exhausted that she cannot bear down. So these were our maternal indications. Now coming on to the fetal indications. In the fetus, there can be fetal distress. See, the fetal distress is going to be depicted on the CTG as a fetal heart rate abnormality. So if you have some maternal or a fetal indication, we go for an operative vaginal delivery. This video is primarily going to focus on the obstetric forceps. See, obstetric forceps has been available to us for the operative vaginal delivery since past many centuries. And if we say the role of obstetric forceps in the modern obstetrics, it has been on a very decreasing trend. Basically because of the need of skill to learn the application of these forceps, and also there are some medical legal issues regarding the fetal trauma, the vaginal trauma related to it. Also we can say that there is an increasing trend for the cesarean section that can be held responsible for it. The obstetric forceps are made of stainless steel, basically two blades that are applied on the fetal head and they help in easily delivering of the fetal head out of the vaginal canal. There are mainly four types of obstetric forceps. High, mid, low and outlet. The high forceps are totally obsolete and not in use at current. They are basically applied to a non-engaged head. The engagement of head basically refers when the fetal head passes through the pelvic rim. So high forceps are not currently used. So now let's talk about mid forceps low and outlet. The mid forceps are applied when the head is engaged but the station is of the head is above plus 2. So what are these stations? The station basically means the distance of the fetal head from the ischial spine. If it is present above the ischial spine then we consider the negative station and as the head descends below the level of ischial spine we consider the positive station. So in the mid forceps, we have uh, the mid forceps application where somewhere between when the head gets engaged and till the level of plus 2 station. So head gets engaged below just when the pe uh, head crosses the pelvic brain. And then next we have is ischial spines. The level at which ischial spines are station 0. And below that is our plus 2 station. 
So somewhere between the engagement and the plus two station is where we can apply our mid forceps. The next is the low forceps and the outlet forceps. See, in the low forceps, we have the station of the fetus can be more than plus two, but not till the level that the fetal skull has reached the pelvic floor. And also we consider the rotation over here, the rotation of the sagittal suture in relation to the AP diameter of the pelvic outlet should be less than 45 degrees. Now coming on to the most commonly used outlet forceps. So outlet forceps are the ones where we can see the fetal scalp without separating the labia. That is the time when we apply. So the fetal skull has reached the pelvic floor and you can see the fetal scalp without separating the labia and the rotation of the fetal skull should be less than 45 degrees. That means basically that the sagittal suture on the fetal skull and the EP diameter of the pelvic outlet should not be more than 45 degree at an angle to each other. The obstetric forceps is basically made of stainless steel and the part of the instrument from where we grasp that part is known as the handle. The handle is then, uh, it can be smooth or it can have slated edges basically for a better grip on the instrument. Next to the handle we have lock. The lock is of English variety. Basically that means that we have a double slot on both the blades so that they can easily fit in. The lock is connected to the blade. The part is known as the shank. And the, in front of the shank we have the blade. The blade has various parts. It has heel, a toe and a fenestration in the center. So the blade itself is of seven and a half inches and the total length if we consider in case of a Wrigley's outlet forceps we can say it is around 11 inches and if we say the long pair of forceps it is around 13.5 inches. Now let's discuss some more dimensions. See the widest part of the blade over here to here. This is around 9 centimeter and between the tips we have 2.5 centimeter gap. So this part of the blade actually encloses the cephalic part of the or the fetal head and here you can see more clearly in the picture the head is grasped between the two blades of the obstetric forceps. So this curve is known as the cephalic curve of the blade. Now something more about the fenestration of the blade. The fenestration is there as it prevents the head compression because the maximum diameter between the blades is 9 cm and we know that the bioparietal diameter is around 9.5 cm. So the parietal eminence is protruded through this fenestration and also it helps uh, in preventing the slippage of blade as the head gets fixed in it. And it makes the blade lighter weight as less amount of steel is used when we have a fenestration. So now let's talk about the pelvic curve of the blade. So this is the pelvic curve as it follows the pelvic curvature of the pelvis. See over here we have a pelvis and first force will be downward and forward then forward and then forward and upward. So as per this force of the forceps that we are going to apply it is going to follow the pelvic curvature. Now let's learn about how to assemble the forceps pair. See, we always have a ghost application that is we apply the forceps or we arrange these forceps in front of the maternal pelvis. So first thing is we have to stabilize these forceps on a table or in a hard surface so that the toe is facing towards the ceiling and we have a stable forceps and same we are going to do with the other blade. So we are going to stabilize it so that the toe is facing towards the C. So now we have right and a left blade but we don't know which one is which. So now we are going to place them side by side. See the rule of forceps is that we first introduce the left and then over the left we apply the right blade. That is how they are going to lock. So firstly left blade is the one that gets applied that is on the maternal left the blade that goes on the maternal left and over that we have placed the right blade so then we get a perfect locking so always have the pair being 
assembled in front of the maternal pelvis while you are going to have a operative vaginal delivery so now just we are going to uh, disassemble our forceps and apply the left blade first and then the right one so also the one thing is that with our left hand we are going to hold the left blade and with the right hand we hold the right blade so left blade this is held by the left hand and the right blade is going to be held by your right hand so right over the left blade and easy locking so this was all the intro about the obstetric forceps its dimensions its curvatures shortly next i am going to upload my videos on keflo pelvic uh, application of the obstetric forceps and what are the exact conditions where we apply these forceps and how we deliver the baby so if you like my video please do like subscribe and share the channel love obstetrics and gynecology thanks for watching